<laughs> that's a good fish, folks. All right, that's a heck of a start for a for a video. That's a that's a solid 13 inch fish right there. You gotta love it. So um, don't worry, I'm not moving from Ozarks. This is a prototype. This is a brand new rod that they're looking at releasing here in uh, somewhere early in 2020. So I'm excited about getting to try it out. That's what that's got we got going on here. But actually, I wanted to start this episode off by talking about some of the little things that I have around on my boat. So let me put this guy away. That's a dandy start right there. <laughs> so, um, you know, some there's just a lot of little things that have to do with crappie fishing. It's not just about the baits. It's the things that you have on your boats. And one of the things I wanted to show you were, let's just go over the mounts for the monitor. So we've got our live scope, we've got our hummingbird, and we're rolling down these lakes going 45, 50 miles an hour. And the guys with the big motors go faster than that. Um, but you need to make sure your mount, your your monitors are secure. And Cornfield Crappie Gear, let me tell you, they have got the best mounts available on the market, bar none. All right, so I start off here at the console. I have a, a 10 inch generation three. I like the interface that Humminbird offers. I think it's easy for a guy that's just coming out and starting. I think it's the best place to start personally. I think the image is great. This mount, I'm telling you right now, folks, secures it. Doesn't budge one bit. So then let's talk about the, the mounts that we have up here near the, uh, the trolling motor. Okay, this is where I spend 90% of my time. Um, it's important. Now I have a, a, a double monitor setup from Cornfield Crappie Gear. Let's have a look at it here. Now obviously I had some custom stuff done there with our logo on there, but let me tell you, that bridge at the bottom there that actually you know raises it up above the the foot recess gives it the extra security that it's tied down to the deck this thing does not move folks it's unbelievable how sturdy it is so call him up mark is an awesome dude um, here's his phone number check it out i'll put the link in the description it's always in the description actually just because i firmly believe in it this That guy came out of the tree. <laughs> it's a good fish. <laughs> that's some that's awesome stuff right there, man. Bam! That is a solid 12 incher. Great day. It's calm. It's a tough day. Talk to a nice gentleman over here from Anna. And uh, he's been struggling a couple days now, it sounds like. But man, I'll tell you what, there's looks like there's wind, but the water is like glass which makes it really tough to kind of pinpoint where these fish would be at. It's not your typical winter day. Of course, it's 55 degrees right now. It's ridiculous. Um, on days like this, what do I do? I go where I've seen schooling fish, and that's all we're doing right now is following them around because they're definitely not stacked up in the coves. The water is like glass. So there you go, folks. I'll tell you, life scopes changed a lot of things. And on calm days like this back in the day, I probably would have just went to piles and hoped there was something there. But, you know, these fish are schooling up and they have schooled up, I should say, and they're moving around the lake. And on a calm day like today, that is what I do. I chase schooling fish and I go to places that I've seen fish within that last week. And I just start searching with my live scope. You know, I do search a little bit with my side imaging to see if I could see a school here or there but it's way more effective for me to get out there and just start standing on my uh, trolling motor and looking around for fish. It's funny because now with LiveScope you know, in this world, um, you see it a lot where guys are just looking down at the screen with one pole chasing around in a cove. So I'll, it's not uncommon for me to chase a school 200 yards um, and then I'll go back to my starting point and try to find a new school that maybe is a little less, you know, moving around just a little bit less. A 
hope this is a crappie, folks. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big bite. Big kicks. Man, that's got to be a big crappie. That's what I was worried about. It's a bass. There's a lot of bass in this cove right now. A lot of bass in this cove. I think we're gonna have to move, but that's a good looking fish right there. Now, in some instances, I will cast to a school. So in this case, I see a school that's probably around 40, 50 feet out there. So it's a quick cast to them to see if I can't get something to happen. Just a little guy, just a little guy. Gotta find some big fish now, here we go. Oh, that's a good fish. <laughs> Check that out. Bam, that's awesome. All I did, I'll tell you what, the colors aren't working out real well, the jigs, but I tell you what, I just tipped that slasher head right there with a minnow. Got me, got God. That's awesome. That's awesome fishing right there. Beautiful day, calm, maybe not the ideal day I wanted to see, but we're putting some slabs in the boat. That's what I'm talking about. have this one a little bit long I'd say That's a hog right there. That's a good fish. God damn. When the bite gets tough with jigs, I'm just kind of putting a little power bait on there. Gonna see if that works out. All yellow, man. Well, power bait didn't work. I'm gonna tip this sucker with a minnow and see what happens. That's another hammer. I'll tell you, you gotta adjust, folks. I'm gonna keep talking about adjusting. As much as I wanna fish with jigs today, we're not catching that many fish. And I put my first minnow and hook down, and I catch a fish. So I'm adjusting from jigs back to minnows for a little bit. Maybe that bite will change as the day progresses, but important, important, important. Bring some minnows to the lakes, folks. You never know, if you're gonna drive that far to the lake, spend all that money, the gas, come prepared for everything. 
I did not expect to have to fish with minnows at all today. But bam, showing good, that's a 12 incher. All right, let's talk more about schooling crappie, shall we? Now, ultimately, there's always gonna be the small schools and the big schools and all that great stuff. But I'll tell you, what I like about LiveScope is that it allows me to guess what direction they're going. And you're really not guessing anymore. In fact, you can see a school moving from behind the boat, under your trolling motor, coming out in front of you, and vice versa, which makes it very, very easy to kind of guess where these schools are at. So what I do, folks, honestly, when I see a school coming in from behind, I'll cast out in front real quick so that I have the bait going into them. Vice versa, if, if, if I see them out there swimming around maybe right to left or whatever, um, I'm casting out there anticipating where they're going to be. Um, now, granted, I'm always trying to target fish that are not moving that much, but at the end of the day, a lot of times they are, and you're kind of moving around the lake with them. Also, I wanted to mention the size of weight that you have on your line. I'm currently using a quarter ounce. That gets it down there really, really quick, especially if they're fast moving schools or fast moving fish. Quarter ounce make, does the job. Otherwise, you're gonna probably see me with a, five, a number five weight. It takes a while for it to get down there, but um, if the bite's really stingy and they're not moving fast, that also seems to be a good opportunity or a good weight to you. Man, we are mixing it up today. Now we're under a float. Unbelievable. Small fish, but adjust, folks. Wow. That's a good fish right there, folks. Best fish of the day right there. How it's kicking. It's close to it, close to it. Good fish though, great fish. Bam, good fish. Smaller guy, but a lot of fun. Bam! I got you. Just gotta love adjusting. We're back to to jigs. Right there. Found him again. It's awesome. Hey, thanks for joining us today. I appreciate it. Little guy, little guy. Great day nonetheless. Gotta love fishing. All right, that's the end of the day. <laughs> Found a lot of fish on side imaging and everything, but I'll tell you what, a lot tougher than I would have liked. But we came out with some dandies. Let them go. Beautiful fish, beautiful fish. Damn, good fish. You gotta love winter fishing. You can book now for guide trips for spring. I can tell you that the schedule will be limited just because of all the tournaments we're doing. Good fish. These last two are about 11 and a half or so they're not that big. 11 and a half, 12 or something around there. I'm marking a lot of fish on my side imaging right now. I tell you what, I've thrown everything at them today. This is probably our small fish of the day. Our small fish of the day. Let's, let's measure our small fish of the day. So that's 11 and a half right there. That's 11 and a half. So great day. 
Book guide trips. Check it out. It's awesome time on the lake, folks. Talk to you later. Thanks for watching another three pound fishing episode sponsored by these great companies. Well, I like to give a little extra for those that have stayed to the end. So you're the lucky ones, folks. Um, I'll tell you what, on this day, um, the blades on jigs did not work. Did not catch one fish if I had a blade on the jig head, which is interesting because I've had other days where it was working. Um, I thought today, them being stingy, that extra flash, um, that little rattling that you know those blades will do would get them to bite. But not today, folks. Not at all. Didn't touch it. So I don't know. I always keep it on a pole in my in my boat so you'll always see at least one rod with one but for the most part today it was a no-go so hey thanks for joining i appreciate it subscribe tell your friends and let's get out and crappie fish have a great one